Okay, so this is part two of the videos uh, for the lecture on ionic bonds. And in this video, we're going to talk about how ion compounds are formed um, and naming with them. All right, so uh, when we bring ions together, they're going to be coming together because they're obviously charged ions and they're attracting and sticking together. So here we have sodium, which is one plus and chloride, which is one minus, and they're gonna come together to balance out those charges and form that ionic bond. <laughs> and we get the ionic compound NaCl out of it. So that's why they're forming, right? They're bringing those charges together. Um, they're really transferring electrons over, so sodium is giving its electron to chloride, and that's to have those full eight octets. Now when we bring, um, ions together, what's, we're going to put them into ratios that produce a net zero charge, meaning a neutral charge. Um, so let's take a look at that forming. So we're going to look at magnesium 2 plus here. So right now the net charge is 2 plus. And so that wouldn't work, right? That's X'd out. That is not zero. It is not balanced. So now let's bring a chloride ion in. So now when we calculate the net charge, I have that two plus for magnesium and one minus from chlorine, so I still have a one plus charge. And that doesn't work out, right? We um, don't have all those charges balanced. So let's try again. So I now I have magnesium two plus and I brought in another chloride. So now for my net, I have my two plus from magnesium and I have two one minuses from chlorine so now I have a zero charge, yay! Now, just to take a look at it, let's see what happens if we add one more chloride. Well, now I have my two plus for magnesium and three one minuses, I mean I have an overall or net negative one. So, nope, that doesn't work. The only one that works here is MgCl2. That gives me that net zero charge. So now really with ionic compounds, um, they're not just like individual things. It's just not one sodium and one chloride together. Instead, they're in these crystal structures um, of trillions of atoms, and they're in that ratio. Um, the crystals in the lattice are in the lattice structure, um, we refer to them by the formula unit, and that formula unit is that fixed ratio. So that's the simplest ratio of atoms which make up the crystal lattice. And so right here, I don't know why it appeared like that. So here, right, is our crystal structure of sodium chloride. We refer to it as NaCl because that's going to be the reduced form, the simplest ratio that makes up that lattice. And so it lets us know what uh, or how many of each are in it based on the charges, right? Um, so that's what we're always looking for, right? We're looking at what are our charges, so what's going to be my zero, what, if I bring them together, what's going to be my zero of them? So let's do some together. So if I have um, Ca2 plus and F minus, well, here, um, I have two plus and one minus. So what I want to do, right, is I say, okay, um, I have a plus two from the calcium and a one minus from fluorine. In order to have the same value for the charges, I'm going to multiply the negative one by two, so that way I get negative two, so that tells me I have CaF2. All right, now what about Na plus and O2 minus? Well, now I have plus one, and two minus, so I'm gonna multiply that one by two, I get plus two, and so now they're the same value, so that would be Na2O. All right, now what about Mg2 plus and S2 minus? Well, I have a plus two and a minus two, they're already the same value, so I only need one of each, so it'd be MgS. All right. Al3 plus and Cl minus, all right, so plus three, minus one, so this means I'm going to need three chlorides to get my negative three, so that way they're the same value, so I'm going to have AlCl3. All right, now what about aluminum and oxide? So with these, I now, so I have a plus three, 
n to 2 minus. I want to think about what's going to be my least common multiple. And really, it's just multiplying by the other to get the smallest value between them. So I'm going to multiply the 3 by 2 and the 2 by 3. And so now I have plus 6 and minus 6. Again, now I have the same charged value. So I have Al2O3. Um, now, this was mathy, right? There's actually a cheat way to do this. Um, so what you could do is you can take the value of the charge. So I'm going to assume 1 there, not the number. So you just take the number, not the like plus or minus, and draw it over to the other one. So that there, Ca one from the F, and then F2 from the two of the car uh, calcium. The only one that this doesn't work for is when you have something greater than one and they're the same. So remember, it has to be the simplest formula. So if I were to drag these down, all right, Mg2, S2, that's, th both of those are two, so I'd reduce them down to one, and then I get the MgS. So you want to think about that with this. So that's a, I wanted you to understand like how we actually get these, but you can use this cross down method as well. All right, so when we name them, we don't have to state how many of each element there are because they're in a fixed ratio and we know what the charge of the ions are, um, or we can figure out at least one of them. So instead, so with naming, um, and this becomes important when we talk about covalent naming, so the difference between ionic and covalent is ionic, we're able to always figure out what the ratio is because it's a fixed ratio. So for the name, we don't need to say how many of each are in it. So when we name them, we just give the cation name and then the anion name. So if we look at this one, our anion, or cation, sorry, is aluminum. And our anion is oxide. So our compound then would be aluminum oxide. Boop. All right. So what I'd like you to do here then is figure out what the formula unit, so what the formula of the compound is, um, is going to be for each of those compounds, and then write their names. So take a minute here, um, pause, and then we'll go over the answers together. Okay, so bringing together silver and chloride, they both have, um, so silver has a one plus charge, chloride has a one minus charge, so we just need one of each. So it's A, G, C, L, and we would call this silver, chloride. Now silver is a transition metal, but it can only have one charge. So if you did write silver one chloride, that's okay. Um, I'm not going to mark that off, but technically it's incorrect. So just kind of be aware of that. All right. So Al3 plus and F minus. So I have three plus charge from the aluminum, one minus for fluorine. So that means I'm going to need three fluorine or fluoride atoms to balance it out. So I have Al F3 and that'd be aluminum fluoride. Okay, now here I have Fe3 plus and N3 minus. If you did the drop down one on here, you'd have to notice that they're the same value, so you need to reduce them down. So it should just be Fe N. Now iron, that is a transition metal that can have multiple charges. So for the name, it'd be iron three nitride. Now note, the three is referring to the charge, not how many there are. So be sure you notice that, right? The Roman numeral is always referring to charge, not the number of them in the compound. All right, so now potassium and iodine. Potassium is K plus, and iodine is I minus. So it's going to form Ki, and potassium, oops, um, now I want to change the ending of iodide, iodine to iodide, so potassium iodide. It's always like the hardest halogen to deal with. All right, sodium and sulfur. So sodium, that's Na+. Plus. Sulfur, when it's a charged ion, is S2-. minus. So I need two sodiums and one sulfur, so Na2S. 
Again, remember, you're dragging those down. And the name would be sodium sulfide. Again, we want to change that ending there. Oops, I'd. Okay, so that is um, ionic compounds and how to form them and name them.